praise your name, O God. Amen. We praise your name, O God. Amen. 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 We praise your name, O God. Amen. We praise your name, O God. Amen. We praise your name, O God. Amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From north and south, east and west, all creation sings forth your praises. The mountains and the hills burst into song. The trees and the fields shall clap their hands. The steadfast love of our God never ceases. With joy and peace. We worship God. You may be seated. All around the world, in every nation, in every country, in magnificent cathedrals, in living rooms, in secret gathering places, our sisters and brothers in Christ praise the Lord. They also look out at the world, they look into themselves, and they see the gulf that is between them and the people we are created to be. They see the hurt and the pain and the evil. And they lift themselves and they lift the world up to God for healing, for grace, for reconciliation. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. Gracious Lord, you created the whole world and called it good. But we look out at your world and see division and suffering. You call us to maintain the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. But we choose division over diversity, confrontation over civility, conflict over peace born from justice. You call us to love the least of those among us, 
but we hear the cries of the oppressed and choose our own comfort. We allow sameness to bring rather than sacrifice for our neighbors. Forgive us. Grant us fresh vision to see one another as siblings in Christ. Rekindle in us your gifts, the spirit of power, love, and self-discipline, that with faith in Christ we might be made new and be part of bringing forth your peaceable kingdom. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, believe the good news of the gospel. Christ came for us. Christ died for us. Christ rose again for us so that we might be healed. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Christian. He's not a convert from Judaism. Um, he did not hear Paul preach and was converted, or Peter preach and was converted, or meet Jesus and was converted. Timothy grew up in a Christian household. His um, grandmother and his mother were um, both converts, and Timothy grew up like we grew up, surrounded by the faith and being rooted in the faith. And as Paul opens his letter to Timothy, Paul makes reference of Timothy's upbringing in the faith. And offers a, a shout out to Timothy's grandmother and Timothy's mother. And as I read this, and then as Mike plays during the time of contemplation, I want you to think about the faith you inherited. Who taught it to you? And what did you inherit? What was that faith? What is that faith that you inherit? So reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus to Timothy, my beloved child, Grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. 
For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony that our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. For I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. As Mike plays, consider this faith that was handed down to you. Who passed it on to you? <laughs> and what does that faith contain? <laughs> Dr. Magda Iskander had been staying with Elizabeth and I for a few days when, in the course of a conversation, she revealed to us that the Egyptian police regularly followed her around Cairo. Dr. Iskander was, is Egyptian, lives in Cairo, um, she is a doctor, is in a medical doctor. She's also a lifelong member of the Presbyterian Church of Egypt. And is a person of great interest and suspicion to the Egyptian government. So, in addition to following her around as she goes around Cairo, they also tap her phones. They blatantly read her mail. It actually comes unopened. It comes open. They don't bother to hide it. And every few months or so, just for good measure, um, Dr. Iskander is arrested. Just so that 
they are, she is reminded that they are watching and looking. Her crime, throughout all of her work as a public health advocate, Dr. Iskander has embraced, radically, fully embraced, the Arabic concept of Christ love. It turns out, at least according to Dr. Iskander, because I do not know Arabic, and Google was of no help because Google doesn't know Arabic either. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't verify this, but I trust Dr. Iskander that there is an Arabic word for love that specifically means the type of love expressed by Jesus. To love with Christ's love is to love wholly and completely with neither judgment nor concern for a person's nature or status. To love with Christ's love is to love with a servant's heart. The Koran holds up Christ's love as the highest order of love. And so Dr. Iskander, who is a public health advocate and has spent her career trying to shift a society where love is limited to clan and family to a society where love goes beyond clan and family so that if your neighbor is in need, you take care of your neighbor. Exactly. From a public health aspect, you can see how important this is because if your neighbor is alone, your neighbor may die. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Iskander has embraced this concept of Christ's love because it's a way of teaching the love of Jesus Christ across cultural barriers in a society where to talk about Jesus to a Muslim will get you arrested. So she has based all of her work around this concept of Christ's love and in doing so has revolutionized home health care in Egypt and built a huge support system for the families of children with cancer. Mm -hmm. I met Dr. Iskander when she was on a tour of the United States through the Presbyterian Peacemaking Program, a program that identifies leaders in our sister churches around the globe who are bringing the love of Christ into situations of desperate need or conflict or hopelessness. And while many consider Dr. Iskander's work radical or exceptional or revolutionary or even subversive, that's why she is a person of suspicion, she sees it simply as practicing the faith she inherited from her parents, the faith that she absorbed sitting in Presbyterian schools and learning the Presbyterian creeds, those creeds containing all these big words such as covenant and election and predestination and grace and justification and sanctification and adoption and we're not going to parse them all, I promise. These big words that summarize the faith that we too inherited from our parents. A God whose love is so broad and deep and wide that it encompasses all of creation. And a Savior whose grace is so wide 
It embraces each of us through no action of our own. And a spirit who calls us, who have been loved so radically by Jesus Christ, to love with the same radicalness those around us. Our parents gifted <coughs> us with a faith rooted in a salvation beyond our control. We don't control whether God loves us. God just loves us. We can't do anything to earn our way into heaven. God's grace gets us to heaven. Of course, we do believe that we need to acknowledge that. We do believe we need to celebrate that. A couple of weeks ago in Columbiana, we held confirmation of my son Eric and Regan, another girl, in the Columbiana church got up in front of the congregation and confirmed their faith and they were applauded and celebrated and we got cake and we got cupcakes because that was seen as a good thing but nobody believed that three weeks ago they were going to hell and two weeks ago they punched a magic ticket <laughs> into heaven God's grace was big enough for them then and is big enough for them now, and there's nothing they can do to change that. They are children of God because God created them. God breathed divine breath into them, and God enfolded them with divine love. We too are children of God because God created us. God breathed life to us and God's love enfolds us. Our neighbor is the same. Our enemy is the same. God has us covered in love. So much so that we don't have to worry about whether we're going into heaven or hell. We don't have to worry about whether Eric and Regan are going into heaven or hell. It's not even our responsibility to worry about if our neighbor is going to heaven or hell. God's got that covered through Christ. Our only responsibility is to love completely, totally, without reservation or condition, to love as Christ loved, and to put that, as Dr. Iskander does, at the basis and the foundation of everything we do. I've been thinking about my friend, the Reverend K.C., um, this week, she, she's retiring or, or transitioning, um, as Serena Williams put it. Um, but I've known her for a long time, and I think back to how shortly after she took the pulpit of a church, one community over from my church in New York, and her son was walking home from school one day and he was jumped by a bunch of other kids. Jumped for being uppity, walking with his head held high, wearing nicer clothes, not fancy clothes, but just respectable clothes. Knowing the answers to questions in class, getting good grades, all doing things that young black men were not supposed to do in that community. So some other young black men jumped him to put him in his place. And Kim shared with me 
how that night sitting in the hospital watching vigil over her son, she became overwhelmed with love. Mm -hmm. Love for her son, but also with love for those who attacked him. She, like Dr. Iskander, had inherited this faith which we share, this faith in a God whose love knows no boundaries. She knew that she lacked the power to condemn her son's attackers to hell, even though that's certainly what she wanted to do. She also lacked the power to get them into heaven. That was God's territory, not hers. All she could do was love without reservation or condition. That was all that was left for her. To love as Christ loved. And that night in the hospital, my friend, and by extension, the congregation she serves began a journey of radical love. Together they birthed a program they called Wanted, worthy, accountable, named, thankful, empowered, and determined. By the way, in case you've forgotten confirmation class, that right there summarizes the Westminster Catechism and the foundation of our faith. Worthy, accountable, named, thankful, empowered, and determined, wanted. They birthed this program for the young black men and boys in their community, a way of passing on the faith that they had received from their parents. Today, the Wanted program includes girls as well as boys, and it has a sister program in Ghana. It incorporates tutoring and mentoring and spirituality and teaches kids it's okay to hold their head up high and to support their peers who are striving to live out their God-given potential. It's an amazing program. It's been an amazing journey for that congregation. In fact, somewhere along that journey, the church actually decided to change its name. It's no longer named Valley Stream Presbyterian Church. That was not good enough for them. They changed their name to the Village of Unlimited Love. Unlimited love, Christ's love, trusting enough in God's grace to leave the saving up to God through Jesus Christ and letting go of any self-imposed responsibility to declare who is in and who is out, who is worthy and who is lost and what one must do to earn God's love. The gift of leaving salvation up to God and freeing ourselves to love, period, without exception or cause. You know, some days we look around, the few of us are here, and wonder if this faith that we inherited from our parents and our grandparents is dead or dying. There are, after all, churches not all that far from us with multiple services and off-duty cops standing in the middle of the road to direct the traffic this way and that. And there are churches that will gladly tell you if you're in or if you're out, if you're worthy or if you're lost, and what specifically one must do to earn God's love. And there's some attraction to that. It's nice to be invited into an exclusive 
flood of salvation. That's not the faith that we inherited from our parents. And it's probably why us Presbyterians don't do mega churches very well. There are not any that I know of genuine Presbyterian mega churches. They don't exist. There are bigger churches in places with bigger population. There are smaller churches in places with smaller population, but there are not 20,000 member Presbyterian churches. They're not there. And when our churches try to do that, when we try to declare ourselves as exclusive clubs of salvation, our churches fail. But when we create diverse gatherings committed to individual and collective ministries of unlimited Christ's love, we thrive. We thrive. My friend KC was, was brought into Valley Stream Presbyterian Church to close the church. It was on the short list. You guys know it's like to be on the short list. It was on the short list. She was one eighth time. She only went there because they had a house and it was in a good school district or a better school district than she was in. And if you're in New York City suburbs, if you're a church that can offer a house in a good school district, you can get a pastor. And she worked for the house. That church grew in this vision of being a village of unlimited love. And she's leaving after 14 years and they are still there. I don't think there's more than 30 in worship, but they're still there. And the number of kids and families they've impacted is beyond measure. Villages of unlimited love. We see glimpses of that. We see that downstairs. We do. As people come in and get loved and are known by name and can get clothes or diapers, we see that. We see glimpses of it. And it makes me wonder what would happen if being a conduit of Christ's unlimited love became our primary focus. Became our primary focus. As it became my friend Kim's focus. As it is Dr. Iskander's focus. Not worrying about who's in or who's out, but worrying about whether we can love more and more and more until everyone we encounter can catch a glimpse of the power of Christ within us and in their own lives. Let's sing. This hymn we're going to sing is pulled straight from um, the scripture we just, let, we just read. Number 527. I know whom I have believed. Stand up.
Let's enter into a time of prayer. Holy Lord, let your grace surround us and hold us and lift us up. Strengthen us, Lord, in our individual needs. Thank you for getting us through hard days. Thank you for surrounding us with people who care for us, who love us, who hear our concerns. We ask, Lord, that you bring healing into the networks and the relationships that we have. We pray, Lord, for all those who need your care. We pray for Dee and for Kathy and for Curtis. Be with them as they struggle with aging and falling and being cared for and allowing themselves to get help. We ask, Lord, that you be with Bob. Be with Greg. Be in their relationship. Be in a time of healing for each of us. For the places where we face confusion. For the places we face mourning. The places where we hurt deep inside. Touch us, Lord, and forgive us. Fill us with your unlimited love. Lord, we ask that you be in this world. Lord, be in Puerto Rico. Be in Florida and South Carolina and North Carolina. Be, Lord, in those with our sister churches that worship this morning with only the sky for a roof. Military. Be, Lord, with our troops as they serve around the world. Be, Lord, with our National Guard as they help out in disaster zones. We ask, Lord, that you be in Puerto Rico where the hurt and the difficulties go deeper than a storm. Let your healing presence be there, strengthen the churches, Lord, so they can be a witness. Lord, be in Ukraine, be with Russia, be in that conflict. We ask, Lord, that you be with leaders on both sides as they navigate this difficult time. Be with those who have lost loved ones in the fighting, those who have lost houses. Let your spirit be present in all places and times of disaster when the world as we know it is ripped out from under us. Lord, we ask that you hold us close to you. You hold this church close to you. We pray, Lord, for the way station, the work that is done within our world. And let it lead us into a place of love. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. As we come to the communion table, we come singing um, this song, The Feast is Ready. We've done it before, so hopefully as we play it along, you will remember it.
In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To God. Invite Geraldine and Carol up.
so knowing that the love of God, the fellowship of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you now and always. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.